which is the easiest way to cache a repository? And no, the answer is not the decorator pattern, but it's another design pattern close to that one. So in this video, we'll see how to evolve an application and in cache on top of a repository using another design pattern instead of the typical suggestion of using the decorator. But we will also see why it's not the decorator that we should be using. So I have here a pretty simple API that, by the way, you can grab the source code as a patron, as always. And there you can find a map, catch, and point. So I'm using a minimal API. You can do the same things with MVC for sure. And this endpoint is doing something quite simple. So as you can see, I'm invoking my repository calling the get async method. And then based on the response, I have a switch statement that will check if I have a response, I will return a 200 OK, otherwise 404 not found. And one thing that we know as a team is that this endpoint is used a lot inside of our company and our database under the hood is struggling to keep up with the demand. And after looking into the logs, we came to the conclusion that we have a lot of invocations to the same product. So some products are used quite often. So why not using caching to avoid so many requests to the database? Having that in mind, our first reaction to implement the caching might be to do something as simple as going to that repository that get a sync that, as you can see here, is a pretty simple implementation that will call the DB context from entity framework and then use the products dot find a sync. So the first reaction of anyone in the team might be to do something here. So around this invocation to the DB context, we could implement here some caching system. And if it's not inside of the cache, we'll go to the database, otherwise we'll return it. So it could be quite trivial to play this implementation since the repository isn't doing a lot. However, let's pretend that the implementation here was quite complex. Or let's look into this problem in the perspective of the single responsibility principle. By adding caching on top of this, we are now adding one extra responsibility to this repository. Is that correct? Is that easy to maintain? I don't think so. Besides the fact that sometimes we might use the repository directly and in other moments it might be useful to use it with the cache. As an example, let's pretend that I use the same repository for two different areas of my system. One of them is responsible to support to provide the services for an administration UI. Another one will be used by the rest of the organization. It might make a lot of sense to use in the administration UI an endpoint that doesn't go through caching because likely I will be doing a lot of CRUD applications, but I will not do it as often as the invocations to get to products. So updating the cache here, implementing the cache inside of the repository will become a problem eventually. And that's when we try to go online to find a solution for this problem, a more maintainable way to add caching on top of this repository or on top of an API, for example, it works as well. You will find a lot of people recommending to use the decorator pattern. And the decorator pattern for sure can solve this problem because it works as a kind of a wrapper around a given implementation. So you can put and extend your repository with the caching system because the original repository will live inside of that one, of the decorator one. However, this recommendation comes from a typical mistake. If you study design patterns, you will see that there are two design patterns that look quite similar. They are the decorator and the proxy pattern. Both of them look like they address the same kind of problem. However, they do it in different ways and they have small details that influence the implementation. Okay, I know that this type of conversation might look like nitpicking or too dogmatic. However, I believe that when we try to use design patterns is for a reason, is to have a common recipe in a way that when we use those names, when we implement those type of solutions, 
when another developer comes in into the implementation, it will recognize that because you have seen those design patterns somewhere. And if you don't use the correct names, it might lead to misunderstandings. It might lead to confusions. But also, in this case, I believe that it might bring to extra complexity to your implementation. Why? The reason for that is that the decorative pattern brings the idea that you have a common functionality. And often in many implementations that you will see out there, you will use a kind of an abstract class to implement the common functionality. And there's an expectation when using the decorator design pattern that you will define through composition how multiple classes will extend a given one. And there's always a principle associated to that that they will always delegate the work to another one. Why? Because with the decorator design pattern, the responsible for defining the life cycle of that class is the client. So I will compose, I will decorate a given class to perform in a given way. And I expect that the call will go through every single place of my composition. But in the case of a typical caching, that's not the thing. Who controls the life cycle of the execution is the proxy. So it's the class that we are using as a decorator that sits on top of the repository. So your caching implementation will understand if it should return immediately, if it should call the base implementation that checks the database. By doing so, it has the control of the flow. And that is the definition of a proxy. And let me tell you that likely, if you have tried to do this type of implementation already, and you follow some kind of implementation online, likely you are implementing a proxy, but naming it as a decorator, because those implementations that they are doing are not correct implementations for a decorator. So what is a proxy? A proxy is a design pattern that will allow you to get to that single responsibility principle that will enable you to follow the open close principle as well. Why? Because the proxy is a way to extend a given class. So you will add an additional level of interaction on top of an existing implementation. And proxies can be used for a diverse number of use cases. Things like having access control, logging, or even caching, and all of that without changing the existing implementation. And that is what we want. If it's not clear for you, the name comes exactly from the proxies that we use nowadays to access the internet. Your company can define a proxy to, for example, deny access to a given website. We can use proxies for caching as well. So here, what you'll be doing is to follow a design pattern that allow you to do exactly the same on top of an existing object. So let's take a look. So as we discussed, we don't want to change this class. What we want to do instead is to create another class. Let's do it. I will name it cached product repository. And the first thing that you should know is that this proxy should implement exactly the same interface as the class that we are extending. So it will implement the I product repository. And what should we have here? So we know that this is a, a cache for our product repository that is going to a SQL database or something like that. So we'll define that one, the real implementation here. We'll get that through dependency injection. And now I need a way to get this thing from a cache. I can do it in several ways. For example, I could use a dictionary I could use something as I distributed cache. I can use I memory cache. So let's start with that one. Okay, I will use the I memory cache and now I will move those two arguments into fields and now I can do my implementation. And the implementation is quite simple. I just need to go to my cache that will, is using the memory cache. Then I will use the cat or create a sync. I provide the ID. If it's inside of the cache, it will return it directly and it doesn't go to the database. Otherwise, if it's not there, I will provide this another function that will allow 
the iMemory cache implementation this get or create a sync to get it from the database to populate the cache and reply to the consumer. So as you can see, this cached product repository is acting as a proxy because it's sitting on top of the real implementation, the one that goes to the database, but sometimes it will change the flow so it will not call the real implementation. It will go directly to the cache and return. So it is controlling the life cycle of the things. And the beauty is that I added a new functionality on top of the existing implementation without needing to change it. And now if I want to use this thing, the only thing that I need to do is to go into my program.cs and I will change the configuration of my services in a simple way. I will simply duplicate this line. I will register directly the product repository and for the interface, I will instead use the cached one. And as you can see, I didn't have to change the existing code that depends on that repository. And one extra thing that we need to do before running this thing is simply going to our services and adding our memory cache. So now if we run this thing in debug mode with a breakpoint inside of the real repository, the one that is touching the database, let's see what happens. I will call for the first time with a given product ID and we can see that we are stopping on the breakpoint. Let's keep it going. I have my response. Now let's reload the page and it doesn't stop there. So let's add a breakpoint on the cache repository, the one that is implementing the proxy. At the breakpoint, let's run again. And now we call again the API. We go to the one that has the cache, the proxy. And if we continue, we can see that it didn't stop for that. So now it's going for the first time into the database. Once the cache is populated, it doesn't go there anymore. And all of that with the benefit that we added a new behavior to the application. So we extended the existing implementation without touching the existing code. And also with the extra benefit that now we can use the proxy in some cases and in another ones, we can use the real access to the database. So if you want to implement the proxy design pattern to create a cache on top of, for example, a database or a given API, you just need to follow this small set of steps. You need to implement the same interface and work as a wrapper around the other implementation. So as you can see, there are many similarities between this proxy design pattern and the decorator one. However, they are not the same. The proxy will shortcut the circuit while the decorator supposedly shouldn't do it. And that will lead to different implementations. And often the implementation that you see out there as the decorator is in fact a proxy. The similarity between those two is that they are both structural design patterns that can change the skin of a given object. You can see it that way. And if you want to do the same, but instead of changing the skin, changing the internals, you should watch this video right here, where I will show you one of my favorite design patterns that I honestly believe that every developer must know it.